This is The Sin Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to a very unique video. Today, you could almost call this a beginner's guide. For anybody who's never installed a wheel and gone through the whole process, not just mounting it onto your rig, but getting it properly running in Windows or whatever your favorite platform is, I figured today would be a good day to cover really the whole Thrustmaster family, because it doesn't matter if you're doing a TX or T300 or today's wheel, the TGT, a lot of the principles are very much the same. I'm going to be installing it on my RC RS1 rig, and whether it's this rig or any other rig on the market, at this point, almost every rig I've ever sat in at this point has been pre-drilled for Thrustmaster hardware, so I'm crossing my fingers that everything goes smoothly like it would with any other Thrustmaster wheel. So, we're just going to get down to business, go through the one, two, three, get everything installed on the rig. I just want to see you to see that it is very easy if you've never done this before. And I always recommend, even if I was at a desktop back in the day, I have to admit, I drilled two holes through my desk so that I could put two screws through the bottom and mount my wheel and then remove it. And this goes all the way back to when I was a desktop user long before a rig. Same thing with a DIY. Don't use the clamp. I mean, the clamp of this wheel is actually a very good clamp as far as desktops go. But when you have the opportunity, it is always best to hard mount, especially when you're talking the, the upper line wheels, which generate a lot more power and you don't want them coming loose or wiggling around. So hello and welcome. And, you know, I, I, I know this is a little different. I'm doing a lot of these rough shows, but I, I just sometimes want you to see the time it takes to do something. I know in my edited videos, I'm like, magical one two three and it just goes perfectly smooth and it doesn't always play out like that now i'm going to install the conical brake mod into the pedal set i'm going to install that onto the rig i'm going to install the wheel itself plug it all in get the power supply on i'm also going to show you to download the drivers update the firmware do everything you do right up to the point where you'd fire up your favorite sim and map your controls we're going to leave that for later when we get down to driving this wheel but I want to keep this just very brief and just talk about the installation process itself. So, starting with the conical mod, which in the last video I gave you a good close-up of this part. And I'm going to be sitting here in my rig. Again, you know, the new style, I guess, with these live shows is I'm going to take things a little more casually, a little less seriously, and let you see it in a little bit more raw form than what you've ever seen from me before. But, here's the pedal set. And I have to say, we, we talked about this. Sure, functionally they are identical to what you would have seen with the other pedal sets, the T3PAs, but you've got the metal arms, which makes them stiffer, makes the whole thing much heavier. For people who aren't hard mounting, just leaving these on the floor, the added weight is probably going to help out as, a bit as well. So, I'm going to get up here, and, oh, sorry, I'm going to walk away from my microphone. But when you go to install this mod, what you're looking for is right here behind the pedal and if you can see there's a threaded hole right there that flat right in there there's a threaded hole right there there you go and that's where this thing sits on the the top of this rests down in there like that and then that allows you to from the bottom install a screw I hope you can see this adequately that will hold it in place very simple if you own these pedals any of the pedals that come with the conical mod and you haven't installed it you're making a big mistake and the reason I say that is it actually takes what's just a potentiometer based pedal and gives it that secondary resistance when you think back to the G25 G27 G29 there was the Nixon mod, the GTI spring mod, so many different mods that allow you to adjust and get a secondary resistance. Now you'll see that here is now hitting that rubber cushion. So I have one resistance to here and a secondary resistance right there. This is adjustable. I can spin this in and out so I can adjust where that secondary resistance occurs. It will change the throw. It technically just made it a slightly shorter throw than it used to be so you know but that's not necessarily bad at all so next up is mounting it onto my rig now i'm still using my rs1 and i have their heavy duty pedal set um, mod 
which is this extra front piece that's much more substantial than came with the RS1. But you can see, a little dusty, but it's been drilled out for just about every wheel, uh, I'm sorry, pedal set that you can imagine. So we're going to have no trouble lining up our Thrustmaster pedals. Now on the back here, what we're looking for, and we've used one to install that conical mod, but we have two points here and here where we can just use general hardware. Now I like to be able to adjust my pedals left and right in addition to the amount you can adjust them here. So I find when I can, I like to use the tracks instead of the holes because now I can slide things left and right. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here. And I find the best way to do that with this pedal, whoop, getting my the dusty part all over me. Just put these on my lap. Let me get my two M5 screws. And now let me think about this as well. I want my wire going that way, the way my rig sits, because I have an arm on the right side of the rig, so I want the wiring going this way. So you can just pull it right out, put it in the channel going the other direction. And I know this is very basic for a lot of you guys, and I'm sure you already have fancy wheels, but again, I, I want the sim pit to cover everything from the basement to the penthouse, if you know what I mean. I want to help the beginners get better. I want to help the medium guys get faster. And I want to encourage the fastest guys to help us all out. So now I'm just lining up those holes on those tracks, which I've now found. And I can just insert the hardware. Now on some rigs, you don't have the luxury of being able to pull the top plate off like I have. But essentially you're doing the same thing. You'd be working upside down, which I'll be upside down in a moment when... Uh, I go to install this onto the rig. So we'll just do that. And this one was giving me a little trouble. I'm wondering if I have dirty threads. If you're ever installing anything, I don't care what you're doing, and the threads fight you, don't just keep doing it. It means you're probably cross-threading. So I waited. I don't know if you noticed, but I was doing that one, had difficulty, went over here, got it in clean, came back here, and waited until I got clean threads. So now the other thing for me being that a lot of times I do left foot break, I actually like to push my pedals as far left. That's why I went with the slider uh, installation instead of in the holes. So now I have those justified or over to the side. Let me grab my, ah, excuse me, my Allen wrench and just tighten those down. Steam King, you could give us the facts about the TGT wheel. Talk about the 40-watt brushless motor. Talk about various features of the wheel. That could be your uh, equivalent researcher or data of the day. Now, the other thing about my RS1 is you can see I have different adjustment points for where I, how much rake I put in the pedals. But that's it. Now I have the mod in. The, metal, the pedals are mounted to my top plate. Hi, Max. How are you? Hi, buddy. Did you want to do some racing? Now, at the end of the wire for the brakes, we have what looks sort of like a phone plug, but it's not the same, and that plugs into the back of the wheel. Let me show you that relationship very quickly, and then I'll mount these pedals. So on the back of the wheelbase, got a spot right there. You can see this plug. Hopefully I'm not getting too blurry. Looks like a phone plug, but the tab is off to one side, not in the middle. And it goes just like that. You heard it click in. I'm not going to do that yet because I haven't mounted the wheel yet, but that's how that works out. Now let's go ahead. Max, you're going to have to move, buddy. Thank you. Good boy. That's a good boy. So now I'm going to get in your guys' way a little bit. Forgive me. But this is how it... This is my job. This is welcome to my world. I love what I do. I have a lot of fun. But it is some work. And, you know, as you know, the other day I was on a Fanatic wheel and pedal set. Which means now when I go to race, I'm going to be immediately trying to adjust to a completely different setup. Just need to put one bolt there. I like to put... 
about that much rake on my pedals. So now you're seeing I, you know, and if you're doing a DIY rig, that's something you also have to think about. If you're going to do a DIY rig, how much pedal rake do you build into it? Do you make them adjustable? Um, in my case, being that I'm testing hardware all the time, having an adjustable rig is a very nice step. Uh, where's my fourth bolt? Here it is. <laughs> Sorry for bumping the microphone there. And there we go. All I have to do is tighten those down real well, real good. And we are done with the pedal installation. Now on this rig, every rig is a little unique, but I then do have slider rails so I can adjust the distance for me. Not a rig review, but a nice feature of the RC. So, next up is the wheel itself. Now the wheel, as we saw in that previous video, came with this hardware. And I did look it up in the directions. <laughs> I did read the directions. And what you do have is a giant washer with rubber. The rubber is going to give it grip. The size is going to give it surface area. Then there's a secondary washer with a nut end, 10 millimeter nut end, instead of the typical Allen. Which, at first I thought, oh, well, that seems kind of primitive. And then the other thing I thought, you know, sometimes the hardware strips out. And this is a pretty overbuilt solution right here. One of those into each side of the wheel. <laughs> Excuse me. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our base, and I'm just going to show you the back since we're not going to be able to show it to you again once it's mounted. But here is where our USB goes. We have a 90 degree USB. There's our power point shifter. If we're going to use it, I'm not installing that today, and our pedal set. Now again, our seat should be pre-drilled. I don't think they've done anything different. I think this is the same pattern as you get with all of the Thrustmaster family of mountable wheels. So I'm going to put it up on my base and then we'll adjust the distances later. If I'm not mistaken, it's this hole here. This is the part that's always a little tricky. There's a little foam kind of in the way. The foam is very, the rubber feet are very close to that right there where it threads in. So let me just double check my distance. Yep, it's going to be, oh, it's those inner holes. Wow, these big washers might not fit on my rig. So... It's the inner ones, which it might be. We're not going to be able to use those on this. Or I'd have to adapt those, which I could do. Okay. Show you another trick with the R seat that works out pretty nicely. You can flip it over and get a look at the bottom side. Not a lot of rigs allow that. Whoops. We can only go so far, though. Where are my, there are my mounting holes. So one goes there. Will I be able to use these? Nope. I'm going to have to do something to utilize those. And I do like the concept. On a rig with a bigger wheel deck, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, so let me get these just started. Being a little stubborn... There we go. Now at this point, now that they're threaded in a little bit, that one's not. I was going to say, then I can flip it over and let gravity help us a little more. But I don't have this one threaded in nicely. Like I said, don't force things. If you don't feel those threads turning easily, 
Don't ruin your brand new wheel by cross-threading the bolt in in a haste to get it mounted quickly. Alright, I think we're good there. So now I can flip it back around and that should make things a little bit easier. It's giving me a little trouble on that one. That one's fine. Frankenstein, you're running a DIY rig. Just went to the scrap, got a seat, which I highly recommend. Then got some timber. I love that. That's how I built my death mobile. <laughs> yeah, but the DD, you're going to have to reinforce it. But that's the beautiful thing about a DIY rig is that you can just always do whatever you need to add to it. Um, well, why is this one giving me trouble? That upsets me. So these, what I would have to do on mine is cut a straight line, which I might actually do, because I do like the idea of the additional surface area. And again, if you have a wider wheel deck, that won't be an issue. <laughs> the illusion of being normal. I need to thrust more. <laughs> yeah, this is giving me a little bit of a fit. Hold on, let me see what's going wrong here. Oh, shoot, I didn't want to do that. Like, I'm just not being very smart and not getting it in straight. There we go. It's just sort of friction of it uh, rubbing on the wall. The, it's a really long screw. So I'm getting a little friction trying to get it screwed in without touching the metal too hard. All right, there we go. Now we can cinch it down. Where'd my tool go? There we go. A ratchet would speed this process up a bit. The screw's really long. These are really in there. That might be a testament to how strong it is. And, you know, you look at the base and it's very similar. The specs of the motor are the same as the TSXW. But something tells me there's a little more to this one. Um, we've got heavier duty mounting hardware. I mean, would I have been fine with just two standard screws like any other wheel? Come on, baby. MDF. Hey, Michael. Uh, MDF rigs are awesome, too. Um, I built a Rickmo Tech out of uh, MDF. And that thing was a beast. We gave it away, and I know that guy still drives in that rig to this day. And that was like six years ago now. All right, this is getting a little uh, tiresome. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this. All right, almost done here. Almost done. Just a few more flats to turn. Well, those bolts are certainly into this base. They are deep. All right, there we go. Now, the one other thing I need to do is adjust the wheel deck height. So, the R seat... We'll do that as well. Get it to where I'm comfortable. Yeah, I think I wore a mask when I did that show when I was cutting it, but then we painted it too. All right, with or without those big washers, I can tell you, this thing is going nowhere. All right, there we go. Next up, let's just get this on. I'm going to need a uh, screwdriver to do this. <coughs> Excuse me. So I showed you on the first video, but we'll see it again. Here's the threaded semi-quick re release of the Thrustmaster wheel family. And this is true of anything from the TX, T300 and up. And you'll see that wiring connector right there in the middle, the threaded section, 
and then that all corresponds to the base here. So what we need to do is put it on and kind of turn until we find that keyed spot that makes it sit. And we've gone all the way around there. It looks like it popped in right there. And then you just turn this quick release. And then it will get to the end. And right now things are just... Uh, there we go. So once you get it tightened, now what I need is a Phillips screwdriver to set that set screw that keeps it from unspinning. Go into my handy dandy toolbox. Yes, Thrustmaster has a website. Um, I'll bring that up in just a moment, actually, when we get to software. We're going to download the drivers, and we're going to install them. We're going to let Windows recognize the wheel, and then we're going to do a firmware update if needed. Well, maybe we're up to date. I don't know. All right, so just getting that tight. I don't have to make it... Superman strength, but you want it good and snug. Now, ooh, ooh, look at that. So now we're getting our first look, and what I need to do is make it about right there. So where are my wheel bits? Oh, oh, it's falling over. I better be careful if I get out of the seat, it'll fall over all the way. So now what I want to do is lock down the R seat in that position. So let me just get this real quick, sorry. Right about there. And this is something that I do like about this compared to DIY. I mean, DIY is great for building around your wheel, and again, but doing what I do, yeah, it looks like about right. On that lower spot, that's a little droopy up there. I want to go one more. Yeah, eight hundred seven ninety nine in the USA. It is a little pricey, Steam. I agree. Um, I mean, I just did that XW. What was that? Six hundred bucks. Hmm. I'm torn between that angle and one more at me. I like having it where it's. That's the range in that gate. I like having it on the bottom because I tend to pull down on the wheel. Hmm. Um, Danka, sometimes I raise my wheel, so I mean, to be perfectly honest, that's the height I want my wheel. And if I go to the next click lower on this chassis, oh. if I go to there, which actually gives me I mean, this is about the angle I actually want, but now I think I'm just a little too low. No, nah, that's all right. That's the one. I could raise it up. I'm actually quite happy with that. It's sort of a, a good, comfortable driving position. No, I understood what you meant about the altitude. I think it's a comfort thing. You know, if you look at, uh, depending on the type of race car, I mean, obviously in Formula One, the wheel is way up there, but that's because the driver is not really what's being accommodated on those cars. Yeah, I, I'd say if I had to complain about one thing in rigs alone in general, that they don't give you that option because some people really again what are we doing here we're simulating we want to get as close to certain positions as, as possible so some people want a formula one type position 
Um, you know, and and here, you know, here's the other thing I would argue though. The good position for driving is like what you'd get in a Toyota Camry. You know, when you think about ergonomics, it's like, well, they built that car to be able to sit there and drive it for hours and hours and hours safely. Um, ergonomically comfortable. That's what they do. Uh, racing, as a racer, you're always being compromised to an extent. Uh, you know, this is the, the cockpit that you will sit in, period. End of story. And they put the wheel wherever they can in some cases. Pedals, too. You think of the foot box in a race car. And, okay, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Okay, let's get the pedals plugged in. We'll do fancy wiring on another day. Today, I'm just going to get things going. I'm not going to worry about wire management. Although, if you know, I, I, I do. you can see I spend time doing wire management. So you saw the plug earlier. And in the case of our seat, this is more their GT style seating position. They do have a formula rig. Um, it's pretty laid back though. I mean, I used that years ago and it's fun. It's a great driving position, really authentic for feeling IndyCar or Formula One or any open seater. But man, you got to really climb into it. I mean, it's like, it's a dedicated moment to get into that rig or any formula style rig versus this i just hop right in and you know as you can see i can just get in and out like this and yet i'm in a pretty comfortable driving position so we saw that turbo power dog hair on it thank you max and that's where the power plug goes in and that's the plug that goes into the back and it is positional so you got to make sure to put it in the right way and not break it did look it up this wheel comes with a one-year warranty apparently in most countries and two years in the European Union. So just to give you an idea of the kind of warranty, I don't usually talk about warranty much, um, but you know, that's always really actually a relevant question. So from now on, I'll try to look up and give you guys the answer when it comes to that as well. So right now, again, I'm not gonna do fancy wire management. I'm just gonna get this up and running, toss that over there and I'll plug it in my easy plug, which is the ugly plug, the one that always runs behind me and I shouldn't use because it looks funny. Yeah, at 5'6", I have a hard time in a lot of rigs. And the one thing that, when I reviewed the RC, one thing that I actually did take issue with was the fact that at 5'6", it was a little hard to get the driving position that I wanted. Um, or I was exactly on the limits. Like if I had been five foot five, I wouldn't have been able to do it. All right, so I just plugged the power into the power supply. You didn't really see me do that. And I then uh, plugged it into the wall. So now the wheel is powered. The pedals are plugged into the wheel. And the last thing would be plugging into the computer, which we're not going to do yet. But what I will do is take the USB, as I mentioned in the previous show, there's that 90 degree A plug, I think they call this end. And then that's a standard, I think this is a USB to A plug, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll just go, again, these can only go in one way. And my wire routing is going down that right arm and up and under. So for right now, I'm just going to throw it back there and get ready to plug it in. Okay, so now what I want to do... Let me grab my keyboard to do this properly. Now what I actually want to do is show you what I'm doing online. So let me shrink me down now that we have this all good to go. And this is the, the Thrustmaster actually made a special website just for this wheel. So if you do a search for the TGT Thrustmaster, this is where you end up. And it's actually not really where you want to go unless you're interested in information. And they have all the details about the rig. I mean, I'm sorry, the wheel. And when I do a full review, I'll probably cover a lot of these details. But today we're just kind of covering getting it up and running. You know, the whole thing with the live stream with me was it was an opportunity to let you guys to see more of the raw version of how the show really plays out. Um, but right here, it's really hard to get their drivers. So in the end, I actually clicked on the Thrustmaster logo up in the upper right corner, 
And that took me to the standard Thrustmaster page. Let me do that again. Um, John Doe, I believe in, in, in the States at least, Amazon is the best place to get a Thrustmaster wheel. I believe they sell them at Fry's as well. Your butt is the same level as your heels. See, if I did that, I'd get a lot more exhausted, Denka. Um, but that's probably due to my age. <laughs> so anyway, um, what I want to do is go to their support tab. So if you look here, right there, you'll see support. And you can go right to download. Or if you go to sort support page, it'll say technical support. And that'll actually take you to this page. And you can type in your product name here. Or you can go to Racing Wheels and just click on it and then pick your wheel. So we're looking for the TGT. This is to get the drivers. What we're trying to do is get instructions, drivers. There it is. Just click on it. And that takes you to this. And right here in yellow, obviously a warning sign telling you your wheels firmware version appears in the top right in the control panels tab. Firmware 3 dash R30 is the latest version. And you can see it highlighted in red. So you can get the user manual here. That's what I did. So when we were talking about installing that conical brake mod, there's the instructions on how to do it. I showed you it's very, very simple. And anything else you need to know. Um, the other thing, I went ahead and already downloaded the driver. And that was right here under driver. So manual, you've got a user manual, a template, or the cockpit. So if you do need to do some drilling. And then if we, checking and if necessary, reconfiguring the racing wheels center value. Let's hope we don't need that. Um, and then beyond that, last thing we need is here under drivers. Uh, and it was hidden away. So you have to actually click on drivers and download the latest driver. So when you do that, you can just double click. It's a 2017 underscore TTRS underscore 6 dot EXE. Mine by default went into my downloads. That's the default for Windows if you're really, really new to all of this. And with that, I can then say yes. I want to allow it to make changes. And now you can see it's preparing the setup. Now I have not plugged in the wheel yet. I'm installing the driver. Force Feedback Racing Wheel V6 TTRS 2017. Talking about installing. Click continue. Uh, click next to continue. Uh, do I accept their license? Yes. Be sure to read this front to bottom. You're probably giving away your firstborn. Install to there. It's just picking a spot. So if you're using a secondary hard drive, uh, if you have a very small hard drive and it, you put everything else somewhere else, I mean... When it comes to, for me, I like everything. Uh, even if I'm working with a small hard drive and, and data drives for bigger stuff, I want drivers on my main drive. So I'm just gonna let it go to the default and click to install. And now you're gonna see it's installing. It's all business as usual. <laughs> yeah, of course, that's what they want, my firstborn, just for agreeing to the terms of service agreement for their wheel. Please connect. So now it's saying next. Don't just hit next. Please connect all of the Thrustmaster force feedback products you want to install to continue click next. So now I'm going to follow their instructions. Please connect. So excuse me as I limbo out of here. And I'm going to grab that USB that we have just thrown over here. I'll do better cable management. I promise. And now I'm just going to plug it into the USB on my computer. Whoop. And try to not bump anything else out of the way doing it. Oh. Oh, I missed it. Ah, I love watching that for the first time. You guys got to see it. I didn't. Obviously, the wheel came to life. <laughs> now we hit, can hit next detecting thrustmaster devices I know it doesn't matter but if you follow their instructions this is the way they want you to do it 
So, you know, if you ever run into a problem and you didn't do it their way, it's just one of those things you got to wonder, hmm, I wonder if that's why it's not working. And, oh, it needs to install. Oh, this is really not good for our stream. <laughs> oh, my. Install. I'm going to tell it no. We'll, I honestly would like to install Shield Wizard has successfully installed your wheel. Before you can use the program, you must restart your computer. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to restart it later. No, you know what I'm going to do? Here's what I'm going to do, you guys. Hang tight. I'm going to stop my stream right now. I'm going to restart my computer. And the first thing I'm going to do is restart it. And then, uh, and then we'll be finished up because really we're not even going to get into driving. I want to keep this video very short so that it's really for anybody who's getting into a Thrustmaster wheel for the first time. Yeah, I understand, Gel, but again, I'm trying to, to just go through all the proper procedures just the way they want. No, I know it's not, but again, here's my logic when it comes to computers. We know there are a lot of shortcuts we can do that work and... You know, like, I, do you always uh, tell it to to uh, drop a USB before you remove it, or do you just yank the cord? We know there are a lot of different things, but then someday, one day, when you're sitting there wondering why something isn't working, you're sitting there thinking well, what could have gone wrong, and, you know, this is the one way to eliminate any of that from ever being the problem. Um, so, yeah, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to stop the stream. Hang tight. I'm going to restart the stream in like three minutes as fast as I can restart it. Get the stream back up just right where we are. And then uh, we'll see what goes on from there. So I'll be right back.